Mr. Rouser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. Uh, as you know, it's uh, no secret that China is engaged in a concerted surveillance strategy to infiltrate U.S. airspace and spy on our country. Uh, this includes the use of Chinese technology that targets critical infrastructure for surveillance, such as drones. Uh, additionally, under multiple administrations, the U.S. has identified this Chinese technology as a significant national security, cybersecurity, and human rights threat. As you uh, probably know, or at least I hope you know, the uh, FAA still uses drones made by Chinese companies, allowing them to inspect the FAA's national infrastructure. And so my question is, is, is very direct. Uh, can you commit to reviewing this matter and ensuring that federal taxpayer dollars are not used to fund the operation of these Chinese drones? We have my commitment that we will put American security first and ensure that there are no vulnerabilities uh, that, uh, that go unaddressed. Now, the challenge that uh, any American industry or sector faces, aviation is, is not an exception, is what to do when uh, there is no other way to get a, a piece of technology and how to make sure then, uh, as we work toward what I like to call friendshoring to source more of the, the equipment that we depend on domestically, uh, if any element is made by a country of concern, uh, that we have a handle on any and all potential vulnerabilities that could come with it. Uh, so certainly, uh, we are continually reviewing this, and uh, you have my commitment that we will uh, do so anytime there's a concern about security. Well, it seems pretty simple to me. Other agencies have banned it, and the Department of Transportation ought to, ought to ban it too. Um, I, th I think that'd be the vast majority opinion of, uh, of Americans out there. I want to move on to a, uh, a, another subject real quick. We hear all this talk about equity, and I'm not exactly sure I fully understand what equity means. Do you have guidance that has been issued to your various agencies on equity, what that means? Sure. A, a good place to look would be in the notices of funding opportunity that, that we publish uh, related to our discretionary grant programs. They lay out the kinds of things that we want project sponsors to consider when they're proposing a, a, a road or, or, or anything else, especially when it's an extremely competitive program. Part of how you can uh, uh, get our attention, I would, I would say, is to demonstrate that that program's going to meet a need. Uh, I do see a lot of confusion around the meaning of equity. To me, it means fairness. We see a lot of communities, uh, a lot of people, a lot of neighborhoods, including but not limited to uh, communities of color, rural communities and tribal communities that have been excluded from opportunity in the past. And if federal dollars went into that exclusion, our view is that federal dollars ought to go into something more fair this time around. That, that's my interpretation of equity. And uh, we're going to continue being mindful of that because we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to do something different than what has happened in the past, where federal dollars somehow, sometimes contributed to segregation. Uh, I don't want us to act as though we have no responsibility to do better this time in the 2020s. That all sounds uh, pretty subjective uh, to me. Uh, the term equity is pretty much a subjective term, if you ask me, which is why I was wondering if it was specific, specifically uh, defined. Um, disadvantaged communities and that seems to be somewhat of a subjective, uh, you know, area as well. So I guess the fundamental question, and we all want to help those that need help, but we have scarce do dollars, and the one concern I have is with all this focus on equity, how are we ensuring that uh, America's, Americans' taxpayer dollars are going to the most important projects that support everyone, that support all of society, uh, including, uh, obviously, uh, disadvantaged uh, uh, communities, uh, no matter how that may be defined. Uh, I, I think that's a real public policy question uh, that uh, needs to have more, more of a definitive answer. I think any time our, our values meet our criteria, we have to be as transparent and objective as we can. Uh, without pretending that everything can be reduced to a mathematical formula. And so we've sought to uh, include as many uh, objective criteria as we can make clear. And sometimes, of course, those are provided by Congress or in frameworks like uh, those that call for us to uh, identify what are defined as areas of persistent poverty, just to take one example. 
Uh, but I think also as we're applying American values to our overall work, uh, there is an element that, uh, that, that can't simply be computed in a formula, and I think that's why we have human beings rather than computers making some of these decisions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chairman, my time's expired. I yield back. Thank you.